So Amy recorded a a, a walk around. <laughs> so Amy recorded a walk around of the inside of our RV. So I want to invite you guys in to come and check out our open range 3X 427BHS. Uh, the the 3X basically means that the walls are three inches thick. So a really thick outside wall, which means that your R rating is really improved over a typical rig. So this is very weatherproof rig, cold weather, hot weather. It does a much better job of insulating you from what's going on outside and keeping your temperature inside a little bit more consistent, which makes it nice in, in extreme weather, which we've been able to get through some pretty extreme weather. Not the worst, but pretty extreme weather in this rig without too much trouble. So, um, hey, let's take you inside and let Amy give you a little walk around and show you what's going on in there. So this is our kitchen and living space. So we'll start over here with the living space here. Now, there are two slides. There's a opposing slides here, which make these pop out and gives it a really nice big space. But there's a ton of storage in here. So um, now we've added this couch here from Home Reserve. When we first um, moved in here, everything in here from top to bottom was pretty much chocolate brown. So it felt very much like a cave in here. And since we're living in it full time, we wanted to be able to have this space feel more open and brighter. So we brought in um, this kind of turquoise teal um, home reserve couch that has nice deep storage in each section here. So we're able to put a lot of things. We'll store, we store like our vacuum hose. We have an in, in system vacuum systems that um, we're able to reach from end to end. Um, and then we have storage in all of these cabinets up here and they have nice tight seals. So um, nothing usually comes, actually nothing ever has come flying out. I will say though that when we stop traveling, we always want to make sure that when you open the cabinets, you open slowly. <laughs> so in case something doesn't fall out on your head. Um, but we have the couch here and then we have just a little end table here and a chair. And then there's two spaces here that you can add um, a table. So if you want extra table seating, um, if, we're, if we're having people over or we want to sit here and eat, we can add a table. There's a pole that we can put here and a table here and then we can add another one here if we want um, or we can use, move it different places. Um, and then again, additional um, cabinetry up here and then we have lighting under all of these and lighting here so we can really kind of customize the mood of the room um, based on how like how we want it in here um, and then next to the kitchen area we have um, a little electric I think this is electric um, maybe I'm wrong Jim will help me with that but yep. it's an electric little fireplace here it does actually heat up the the area a little bit it doesn't heat the whole space but it does um, give a nice heat to this area here and you can even turn the light on to make it look like there's a little fire going and, um, and so let's come in here into the kitchen area. There's cabinets here that we use for our pantry storage. It's nice, um, nice areas here where we can put, we can store all of our oils. We um, store some other things like vitamins and things like that. And then even a few of our dishes and things like that are in this cabinet here. And then we have nice deep storage um, on this side and a little bit on this side here. And um, we have a stereo system that will play um, inside the um, inside the rig as well as it will play just in the bedroom or will also play outside. So you can play all three of them or you can customize where you want the sound to be coming from or going out to. And then here with the TV space, um, this lifts up and you can store, like we have here, DVDs and things like that. You can store video games whatever you really want to up here. And all of this locks. Um, here we have nice double sink basin. I really like this because we've been able to, we'll put dirty dishes here and then clean dishes here and then we can have a drying space here to put away. And um, what's really nice is we have these little extra pieces here that can just slip right in. And they can give you additional storage space, I mean, uh, cabinet space where you can do prep work and things like that. Um, or you can cover the whole thing and you have just a lot more 
space to work with. So I feel like that's really nice. It's been an added bonus, and I like that the sink, um, uh, the faucet, this pulls down, and then you can you can spray the water in whichever direction you need to. And then also here in the kitchen, um, we have this is a microwave. Um, as well as um, there's some storage up here that we put up extra things. In fact, we have so much storage in here that we haven't fully utilized every space. Um, we still have room to grow, although we're trying to simplify things here. So uh, that's part of the goal here uh, with this. Um, and then there's a small oven here. We haven't done a whole lot of baking in it. Um, we do sometimes, what we've done is added a, um, a, some stoneware in here. I know a lot of people will also add some tiles in here that you can add to kind of disperse the heating a little bit better here. But it's a propane stove um, and then you have workspace here that lifts up and then you can do, we have a four burner, a three burner um, cook area which has been plenty. We haven't missed the fact that we don't have four burners. Um, but this is our propane stove and oven here and then this again folds down. Um, we keep our knives here up on this um, pretty cool magnetic uh, tool from Ikea. And we have not had, you know, like knives flying out at you. <laughs> we have had a couple of times where we've had, you know, maybe a knife has fallen um, if we hit a big bump or something. But um, for the most part, we've had no issues with that. And then there's additional storing da storage down here where we store some pots and pans and things under the stove. And then this is a really cool feature. It has a pull out cabinet right here where you can put all of your spices and things. Um, we've really liked having this feature in here as well. And then, um, and then also here in the kitchen area, we've got um, nice little pull out um, storage spaces for like sponges and cleaning things. Um, tons of cap, uh, storage down below for cleaning supplies and um, towels and things like that. And then um, two more drawers where you can add, you know, like your bigger utensils, um, things like that, all of your kitchen tools, and then a nice utensils drawer. And then even you can hide away your, I think this is probably a, eight an gallon. eight gallon. Um, kitchen um, trash can that we keep in here that it's nice that it gets stowed away. It doesn't have to stand out and everywhere. And then this is a very nice size. I want to see, say, Jim can correct me if later, but I want to say this is like a 21 or 23 cubic foot um, residential size refrigerator. It's the side-by-side -side stainless steel. Um, it does have the water and the ice feature in the front which makes really nice to be able to have kids to be able to be able to fill their own water bottles and things like that um, and I love that so it has the freezer side here where we've been able to keep uh, we haven't really had to change it all the way that we shop um, at the grocery store just because we're living in a fifth wheel um, we've been able to pretty much you know shop in bulk if we want to at Costco it's not your traditional um, camper size fridge that maybe can't store as much um, so then on this side I like it because there's a little um, button here that you can open and if you just want to open this front side here you can access um, you know condiments lunch kind of items and things like that without opening up the entire fridge and and wasting that that energy there or you can open the entire fridge and I like that you can access that same side from the inside as well. We haven't used this as much to be able to access from the inside, but it's nice to be able to have that. Um, and then we usually add these little um, stoppers here that keep things just extra secure when we're traveling. So, um, so these are two of the slides in here. Let me see if there's anything else I've missed in here. Let's kind of move over here to this area. And this is originally, um, in the fifth wheel when we bought it, there were two chairs here, two brown chairs, and we decided we weren't going to use that much. So we purchased an Ikea table, um, and and then we kept um, and the Ikea drawer kind of filing system that we have that holds it up. And this has become our space that where we need, if we need extra prep space for food, if we need um, schoolwork to be done here, eating to be done, this has really just been a very versatile table for us. 
um, and we've loved it. And then we've added these little stools here, also from Ikea. Can you tell we love Ikea? Um, they pop up and down, and so it's made it really nice so that it, it's tall enough for um, an adult to sit on or or for kids. And, and they just so ever easily. <laughs> Effortlessly. <laughs> No way. Go down. Um, and they just park under there. And this is where we've also kind of stored um, some school-related items. You can see our kombucha brewing here as well. And, and where we kind of keep some water bottles and things like that. So again, huge, lots of storage up here where we can add in more books and all kinds of things and under mounted lighting. Um, so we have lots of storage space here. And this is where we control our lighting here as well as a ceiling fan that we have. Um, and then of course our, our central um, heating and air conditioning in here. We have two air conditioning units, one in the master bedroom area and then one um, here in, in the living space here. So come on in with that me into the back, um, the bunk room here. And this is also kind of where we store all of some of our homeschooling stuff that we do, which works really nicely, except we do have to move it whenever we travel. So, um, so come on here. It does have a door that separates. And um, so we have, again, two opposing slides and they bump out on each side, which makes for a really nice space for our three boys to play. So we have, uh, we have a top bunk here, and um, this actually pops up if you need to, and it will kind of pop up and set up high, but it's a nice long um, twin size bed with a window next to it, and we've added kind of little, some little boxes here at the end of the bed so that the boys can kind of store some of their personal items and things. And then this originally was also a couch that kind of folded into, folded out into a bed as well. And we found that we weren't really using it as much and we wanted some space for our digital piano so the boys could continue to take some piano lessons. So um, our amazing contractor friend, he helped us take that couch out and put in some great um, shelving here with a lip on it. So we never even have to move our piano if we don't want to, it never even moves. We don't have to do anything to it when we travel. It does great. We just put our cover on it when we're not using it. And then he added in some storage here for us to put, they can put other books and things. And then we have a great little nook that they can add in some of their dirty laundry and things and their backpacks. There's also great drawer storage down here where we can add in coats and some additional kind of kitchen items that we don't have room for in there that don't fit in things. And um, they have two great windows in here. There's a vent in here, so they can get a lot of circulation if, if it's a little stuffy in here or something. Um, but they've got great cabinetry in here, some hanging storage that they use where we can put their hanging clothes, and then two really deep drawers here. Look how deep these are. Um, these are really deep to add in lots of clothing. Um, so plenty of space for a family and then we have um, cabinetry on the other side that also stores some more items and we've added this little ottoman here that um, I love because it can be used in here as some extra seating and storage because it lifts up and you can store things in it as well but you can also we can wheel it into the living space and kind of be, it can become extra seating in there or even like a lounge space where you can add and put your feet up to watch a movie or something. So on this side, there's two more bunks. This is a bunk up here at the top. This one does not lift up like the one on the opposing side, but um, but they also have a box at the end. And then this down here at the bottom folds down almost like a little Murphy bed and then we just fold it up whenever we're traveling um, and then there's this little netting space here where they can put books and things that um, they've found on our exploring adventures um, one other thing that they have in this room is when you move the ottoman over if we have um, if we have one boy where we have doing some extra school work that needs to be kind of more private um, or kind of more alone quiet this little feature here, this pops up and then a leg pops down and you have an additional seating here. We can use um, additional table space here that can be used for homework, extra dining area, and we can even use our ottoman or 
or our portable stools from Ikea that we can bring in here to use for that. So that's been really handy to be able to use and it just folds right down out of the way um, when you don't need it. One of my favorite parts about our fifth wheel is having this half bath in the back. Um, it was almost a deal breaker for me to have to share a bathroom with the three boys. <laughs> and so I love this space here um, because it has a half bath, it has a composting toilet and um, it's a sea head composting toilet um, and a small sink that we've added. We've kind of upgraded the faucet um, on it and um, and it's just, it has more storage up above and also down below that we don't even need to utilize all of it. And then there's a door that goes out as well. So when we're traveling or on days when someone needs to use the restroom, they can easily pop in here and go to the restroom and we don't have to use the gas station restrooms. So that's a bonus. <laughs> so now we're going through the hallway and I'm gonna take you through this hallway area and up into the master bed and master bath. Um, I like here right in the entryway we have a um, a small coat closet that holds probably two, maybe three max coats. So we don't put all of our coats here. So it's nice because we've added some little um, hooks here where the boys can put their jackets and things like that as well. And then down below here is our complete control panel. And um, this has all of our solar and controls our slides and everything. So I'm gonna let Jen go over all of that in more detail with you in a little bit. So I'm gonna take you up here. This door goes in right into our full bathroom, and I'll show you that, but we're gonna go in through the master bedroom first. So this also has a door that's also locking, and um, if you come in here, this is a slide as well. So this is the fifth slide that we have. There's five total, so this pops out, giving some nice walking space here, and we do have walking space around all, all three sides of the bed. This side gets a little tight and you kind of have to shimmy. You can't really just walk fully in there, um, but it, it's doable. So um, this is a king size bed. So it's plenty of room to be able to put, if you even wanted more walking space, you could even do a queen size um, if you wanted. But there is um, cabinet space, storage space above the bed that, um, that we love. You can put all of your kind of nightstand, book reading, um, oils that you that we use um, at night. We put in all those kinds of things up there. Plenty of space, and I love it that if you're reading at night, um, you know you can pop on these little state. We have little lights on each side. So if one person's sleeping or one person's just wanting to read, you can spot like this and you can actually swivel this around, which is really nice and handy. And we have blinds on almost all of the windows, if I remember correctly. Um, but these blinds are really blackout. Um, in fact, you really don't even know when the sun's up at all when these, are, when these are pulled down. So these are really amazing if you want that really dark light effect um, when you're sleeping at night. And, um, and then here's our, another, our other control system for the heat and the air here. And then we have this nice closet system here. Um, this whole system, this whole closet is mine. <laughs> but we also store our printer in here. Um, I have a, a nice handy system over here for storing like jewelry and necklaces and things. And then there's a ton, there's a shelf up here where you can store other items like um, bigger shoes and things like that. Um, and then this side here where we store like our um, lawn, our dirty laundry area and, and some other things. And then there are two big deep drawers down here underneath where, where other things like, you know, pajamas or other clothes that you want folded can be put in here. And this entire bed lifts up and I'll show you here. It lifts up and we have a ton of storage back here. We can put all kinds of pantry items. If we do do bulk shopping, like at Costco or something, we can put extra items in here. We put like our laundry bucket here, down here where we store like laundry items when we're going to do laundry and um, all kinds of extra games and things for the boys that may be a little too bulky and that we want out of sight. So this is our dresser area, and um, these two drawers here, they're not quite as deep 
as some of the ones over here and some of the ones at, um, in the boys' bunk room, but they've served really well to add in, you know, um, other clothing items, and there's two of them here. The dresser's really nice. The window, um, I feel like it brings a lot of light into here. This is the darker, I guess, of the spaces just because we haven't painted the woodwork in here as much, but it still feels pretty airy in here. And then there's two cabinets on each side of the small TV here um, that, again, more storage than we even need. And then the small TV here actually pops out and swivels if you want to. Um, so there's there's two TVs total in in this fifth wheel, and um, and then this space here is um, designed to have hookups for a washer and dryer, a stackable washer and dryer. We decided not to utilize that space for that, and we've used it for more closet space, more storage, um, and for um, hanging items. But you can you can add a stackable washer and dryer in this. We have found that so far going to laundromats or doing laundry at um, people's homes where we've stayed or even at RV parks has served us pretty well. So we haven't really had much of a need for that. So this is our um, full bath. Um, we have another composting toilet here. This is again another sea head composting toilet. Um, and we utilize that. Um, we don't have the... Um, the liquids diverted, but we haven't had much need for it since we have two of these. And then um, we hang some towels here. We have an extra mirror here, which comes in handy, um, especially if you're short like me and the mirrors in, in the rig are kind of extra high. So it's helpful to have like an additional mirror. And then this here is our shower. It opens up like um, it's kind of a sliding door like this. And it's actually a really nice size shower for uh, for a fifth wheel. Um, it's actually larger than the shower we even had in our two-story house back in Houston. And it's got seating. We sometimes, when we're traveling, we'll use it for storage for a few things when we're not using it. Um, and it's um, it's nice because even Jim, who's 6'1", hasn't had any trouble with standing up in here. Um, there's a nice skylight at the top, so it brings down some nice natural light. And it has this um, handheld um, shower head so it makes it nice where you can move this around to wherever you need it but he's six one and hasn't had any trouble with with that there is a ton of storage in this bathroom um, under the sink there's storage where we can put items above the sink there's storage um, there's a ton of storage here behind this mirror it's very deep it goes way back um, we haven't even needed to utilize all of that this is a nice kind of vanity space here, complete with um, uh, electrical outlets here if you need like a curling iron or a um, or a blow dryer set up or anything like this. So this is an interesting feature here. This top section here is actually not a drawer. It's just a pull-out shelf where you can add um, things as you're getting ready in the morning if you need to, setting clothes here or a curling iron or a hair dryer, things like that. And then there are four really nice, um, really go far back drawers that you can add all kinds of bathroom needed related items. Again, we don't even utilize all of these. Um, so we really have a ton of storage in this space and even more outside that Jim's gonna show you. So this bathroom has really served us well, we love it. <laughs> so, so now, um, so now I'm going to talk through the control center, which is kind of the heartbeat of the RV. It's where we, uh, all the electrical runs through and all of the controls for the different slides all run through this. So this is where you come to do a lot of the work of working on the RV in different ways. So let's go inside here. What we see here, all of these red lights, um, all of the red switches have different have lights in them to let you know when they're on and make it a little bit more obvious that they are on. So we have two different floodlights, one on each side of the RV, and these switches turn those lights on and off. And then we have a third light that is a porch light that is just like you think of the porch at your house. This one is for the steps of the RV so that at night when you come home that you have a way to see where you're standing, where you're trying to walk as you walk into the RV. So it's not a big bright light, but it shows you those steps when you're trying to walk inside the RV. And we typically 
like to leave that on when we're traveling or especially when we're in some places that are going to be darker when we're coming home. This is for the hall light right above our heads and then you can see we've got that on right now to try to give a little more light in here. Um, and then these, this is a switch that helps us to see the tank levels, the water levels and, and the different levels of the different tanks that we have. Okay, so we have two black tanks. We have a front black tank for the front restroom and a black tank for the back restroom, which we are not using either of those. And so they, we don't ever use this switch. But then we have our different levels, empty, one, two, and one third, two thirds, and then all the way full. And then we have our different switches. Okay, so we can just press and hold and see where our battery level is, or the fresh water tank, or for the black one, black two, and then our gray tanks, our gray one and our gray two, which these are notoriously poor at measuring the depth, the actual depth and the amount that are in those tanks. And so we don't trust those. Uh, I've actually gone and emptied the gray one and gray two, totally emptied them and then checked these and seen that there were, that it still showed that we had two thirds full. So I don't trust that. I have found a system online that I'd like to see about getting that does a much better job of judging how much is in each of those. All right, then if we go all the way across here, uh, these are the five switches for the five different slides, starting with the master bedroom slide, which is slide one, and then the main living room slide, and then the back bedroom, those two slides in the back bedroom, and then the refrigerator slide. So those five slides, it counts its way around the rig. And so we have the in and out, you just push it up or down and it pushes the slide in or out depending on what you're trying to do. And then we have a fantastic vent up above the cooking area here that is up on the ceiling basically. And it's electronic since it's a nine foot ceiling in here, it's an electronic uh, raise and control. And you just push up on it to lift that up and push down on it to lower it down. And then you have the fan, you can turn the fan on or turn it off if you need it. Or if you wanna just use it as a, uh, just an open vent, then you can do that as well. And then down here is our awning control. So we have a large awning out over the main, the front door of the RV. And so you turn this to the on position so that you're able to extend and retract the, uh, uh, retract the awning. And it's just a push it once and let it go and then it will extend itself all the way out. We have an awning light switch then that there's an LED strip that runs the entire length of the awning here. And then when you wanna bring the awning in, you just push the retract button and it automatically draws the whole thing in and sets it to the travel mode. So now another nice thing about this is that if it's a windy day, we've had friends that have had awnings completely blown off of the RV but the nice thing about ours is that when the wind starts to pick up and it gets a little crazy out there, then it will automatically retract itself back in. Okay, so this is a, a switch that we have between our fireplace and the washer dryer prep. So in her walk around, Amy mentioned the washer dryer and she showed you where the fireplace was in the living room. We can run one of those, we can run electricity to one of those, but not to both at the same time. That's to help preserve and conserve the energy in the in the unit but so this this as you see it's set up right now to run electricity into that washer dryer area in that what is my closet and then if we wanted to switch it we could click it up here and the fireplace would turn on and we can use that as a light a nice little light or to actually warm the rig here in the living room and then finally the pièce de résistance the uh, the control for our solar panels. So this shows you the solar is on or off. Somebody just closed a basement and it freaked me out a little bit, but you can see that the power is on for our, uh, the solar panels are on right now. It's charging and inverting. And so we leave, I leave both of these on all the time, basically. If we're running low on power at night, I might shut off the inverter so that there is no um, no additional draw to keep our batteries above 50%. But in this, you've got connection to shore power that you can set up here and you can see you can set it to a max of 50, 30 or 20 amps, whatever it is that you want it to be maxed out at. You can have an automatic generator start set up. Uh, you can do metering and the setup of the entire unit. And then if the technic, 
if there's a technical issue with it and you're on the phone with the tech team, then they can actually walk you through some different things that you can do to see what the temperatures are at different points and all kinds of um, all kinds of different tests that they can run and have you run so that they can get the setup and make sure that it's correct. But basically what we look at here is we typically keep it on showing us where the the actual charge is. So the state of charge, SOC, is, is what I usually leave it on and I can look at that and it just gives me a battery percentage level so that we can know what's going on. It's also nice because it's constantly telling you whether it's float charging or if it's inverting or whatever it is that the state of the charge is, how the charge is coming in or going out at, the, at any given time. And so you can know if you're hooked up to shore power and you think you might have lost power, you can just come and check this really easily without having to go outside to see if you are indeed charging the batteries. So Amy's got the inside covered. And so my job now is to give you a little walk around on the outside of the rig and show you some of the features that we've got here in our open range 427 BHS. Basically BHS is bunkhouse. So 42 foot. 42 foot fifth wheel. Let's start here at maybe the most important part. Our map of the United States. So as you can see in our map of the United States, we've been traveling for a year and we still have a lot to go. <laughs> but We started off here in Texas area and then from Texas went all the way straight across the country into California and then back and up and over and down and across and have eventually made our way back over into we're right now in tennessee so hanging out in tennessee we still haven't put our sticker on so we got to do that but uh we're here in tennessee today um and so this is uh the outdoor basement one of the basements that we've got so this is some big a big storage area i'll show you inside on the other side of the of the rig here but uh so this is a pass-through basement tons of storage this holds all of uh, everything from shoes that don't get worn every day to tools, uh, our tables and chairs that we sit outside with, all kinds of things. So tons of storage space in there for everything you could need, everything you could imagine. Here we have two on this side of the rig, two 15 gallon propane tanks right here. Try to run them in succession so I use one at a time that way if one runs out in the middle of the night no big deal you go switch on the other one and then go to the store the next day but if you keep them both running all the time then you may run out of propane in the middle of the night and not realize what's going on so we have two on this side and one on the other that uh, provides a lot of uh, plenty of propane to last us for quite some time uh, here in the front is a 5500 or 5000 watt kilowatt a big 5500 generator so a little Onan Cummins generator which in the events where we need to run the AC if we're if we're dry camping we want to run the AC or if we just need to charge our batteries up if it's a if it's a really cloudy day then we fire the generator up it's got an automatic start inside the rig a little starting place inside the rig or you can just open up the front there um, and it runs super quiet, so you could be, we could be standing right here having a conversation while it's running, and it wouldn't be overwhelmingly loud. So um, it's pretty nice. It's really a good one. And here is the other side of this basement storage. You can see that it runs all the way across the rig. Tons of space. We've got everything in here from our 3,000-watt inverter to all of the solar hookups and all that sort of stuff are inside, are inside there. Um, and then cords, tables, chairs, tools five gallon gas tank that keeps us keeps us running in emergencies where we're running low on gas just all kinds of stuff that we store in here so um uh lots of space we also have water filtration so when we hook up to our city we've got water right here these are water filters that that clean the water coming into the rig so every drop of water that comes inside of the rig even that goes into the tanks goes through those filters so all of the water that goes in is clean before it hits us and let's take a look at the the water input here so so this is our the water intake basically here um the convenience center as they so so beautifully labeled it in the in the manual but here you see our, our connection for the fresh water 
as it comes in from the city. Um, before it comes in for us, though, we run it. It comes in through this hose. We have a a water meter on here that I hooked up to help us know exactly how much water we've got in our tanks. Uh, so if we're going to go travel somewhere and I want water for a couple of days, then basically what I do is I will empty the tank by pulling on a little lever at the bottom down there that you can't quite see. I'll empty the tanks and then I will fill it with fresh water and I reset this. And so it will allow me then to, let's see, it will allow me to know exactly how much water has come into the rig so that I'm not guessing. The, the meters that we have in the rig are not very good and not terribly helpful. We also have a pressure regulator so that um, no matter where we hook up at, what campgrounds we hook up in, we know that the pressure is not going to blow out all of the, the pipes in the rig. Um, these, this valve system lets you either use the city water or if your freshwater tank is full and you want to use that, then it allows you to set up the valves in different ways to use water from different sources. Here you see our black one fell off and disappeared um, on a drive a while back, but that one doesn't ever really change places for us, so it's not a big deal. Um, also have cable input for those of you that watch TV. This will be where you plug in your cable when you're at a campground with full hookups and then just a little 110 in case you need it when you're outside. So this is our convenience center. Um, so, oh, and I'm, I started to talk about this but didn't finish that, that the water that we have comes in from the outside source and then it goes in, cut a little hole in the wall here, it goes out into our filters and then it comes out of the filters and goes back into our fresh water. So all the water that comes before it even comes in the rig, it's been filtered out down to a pretty solid level of filtration. One of the other features of this rig is the LCI electronic leveling system. But the handy part of that is that, so what you're supposed to be able to do is when you get here, you basically hit the up arrow, hit enter to drop your front jacks and the front jacks will will settle themselves on the ground for you and then you can detach from your truck and then you so, supposedly just hit this auto level button and it will level out your unit but it doesn't always work and when I say it doesn't always work it works about half the time but then you've also got another uptick here and you hit enter and it allows you to enter manual mode where you can make adjustments uh, uh, on each of the directions individually. So, so trying to get yourself set up. We also have, so here's our, our pure sign, 3000 watt pure sign converter that allows us to get the energy from the batteries, from solar to the batteries and then into the rig. And then there's a little charge controller also that we got set up through um, when we had our solar installed. So this is a, this is a fantastic, basically everything that runs in the rig can run through our solar um, unless we're running AC and that doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes we'll run the generator to do that. But otherwise, this thing takes care of everything that we need. And it's because it's a 3000 watt inverter, it also leaves room for expansion. It is pure sign. Um, we didn't want to deal with the potential issues of not having that pure sign converter. So we got to pay a little bit of extra money to get the nicer one. So this is where the electricity comes into the rig. And you see it's just a... A long cord, we've got dongles that allow us to hook up to 50 amp, 30 amp, or even just a, a regular 15 or 20 amp, depending on your, your connection. But So this is a, um, this hooks in here and then powers the entire rig. So all of our electric comes in through this. So I just want to point out, so this is two of our slides here. This is the back bedroom, one of the slides for the back bedroom, and then this is our living room slide. The living room slide is enormous. It's very long. It, it covers the full length of the couch and then the chair inside the living room. So it's it's like seven feet long and it's 40 inches deep. So when we first started traveling, I had trouble several places that we would go where we would get parked and then I would realize that we didn't have enough space for the slide to come out. So eventually I took a Sharpie and wrote the measurements for each one of the slides kind of on the on the outside here just in sharpie 
And then that way, when we would pull into a different park in the front of the pickup truck, I also had a tape measure. And so anytime we would pull into a park and get ready to set up, I had my tape measure and I could just look at each one of the slides all around the rig and know how long that slide was. So I could measure to make sure that we would fit in front of poles or trees or whatever it is that we were parked next to. So um, here on the back side, we've got a ladder that allows you access up to the top of the rig and a bicycle rack that the previous owners left for us. We were so grateful. And then this is Amy's bicycle. It hasn't seen a lot of activity since we've been traveling, but we carry it with us everywhere we go. Um, so we have it in case she wants to, to get on the rig and take a ride. You also see, not the rig. She wants to ride on her bicycle. So you also see the backup camera here at the top. Um, so we have a view of what's going on behind us. We typically don't use that because it's not the greatest image, but it is nice to have in a pinch um, and to know that it's there. But usually what happens is one of us gets out with a walkie-talkie anytime I'm backing up. And so we have walkie-talkies so we can communicate with each other about what's going on. This is the outdoor kitchen. We very often refer to this as outdoor storage, <laughs> but we have a little outdoor apartment refrigerator here. Um, this used to be a microwave that we took out. Hello. A microwave that we took out to just allow ourselves some storage. And then a couple of cabinets here, a sink, and then a little, a little cooktop that you can see is dusty and hadn't been getting a lot of use. And then additional storage here in a drawer. So all kinds of stuff. And as Amy mentioned to you, we, we really don't even use don't even use all the storage there's just so much here um, it's a lot of space a lot of space to fit things in and then access to the the half bath in the back so that when we're traveling we um, we don't have to stop and use the bathroom at a gas station which is always a win so oh and we also have some speakers here on the outside so that when you're listening to music inside, there's a little button that you can push that puts the music on the outside here so that if you're outside barbecuing, doing whatever, hanging out with the family, you can listen to your music while you're out here as well. So a couple weatherproof, weatherproof speakers that, uh, that will play the sound outside. Kind of a nice feature. And then above us here, let's point this out, is the awning that spans a good distance over the master bedroom and it is a long awning that comes out with a, an LED strip on the end of it so that we can, if there's any kind of weather or whatever, we can put that out and it's great. Um, also then if it's, uh, if it's really windy, it automatically senses that and pulls itself in so that it doesn't get blown off in a big gale of a storm. So, and you can also see right above the door there, an automatic sensing light that I attached there. It's got solar so it recharges itself through solar and then at night when you walk in it will automatically turn on to light up this area so that's nice when you're coming home late at night and it's dark out and you can't really see very well it just pops on to give you that little bit of extra light outside the rig hey thanks for taking a tour of the rv with us we hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions anything we can answer put them in the comments below and we'll be sure to follow up and try to answer those questions as best that we can. We have loved this RV and lived in it full time for over a year now, and it has served us extremely well. So um, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it as much as we do, and we will look forward to hearing what you think about it.